Welcome back to the Rolex 24, and here we're going to deep dive into everything to do with how technically advanced these new sports cars are in IMSA. We're currently witnessing a new golden era of sports car racing. And in this episode, we're gonna go behind the scenes with some of the engineers and drivers to understand what that means for them. Not only from a driving and competition point of view, but also from an engineering and development point of view. Pretty much everything these days is driven by data and information. And Bosch are gonna give us a little bit of a look how that works in IMSA. And this process starts with the electrical signals from each of the sensors up to the control units, then to the telemetry units, which stream the information from the cars to the pit stands for the engineers to understand what's happening. What is IMSA? IMSA is North America's premier sports car racing series. You've got iconic brands like GM, Ferrari, Porsche, Aston Martin, all racing on the same track. You've got multiple classes. Start with the GTP class, the premier class, the hybrid power units that they've introduced recently, super technologically advanced. Below that, you've got the spec LMP2 class, which is a prototype car. Then we go down to GTD Pro, which is the GT class. You've also got GTD, which is pro drivers and amateur drivers. So no matter what you wanna see here, there's something for everybody. There's literally four races happening simultaneously on track. And here at Daytona, that race happened to last for 24 hours. You've got a lot of classes, which means you've got a lot of cars, which require a lot of drivers, especially to do these 24 hour races. We've got drivers from IndyCar and Formula One, and I got the chance to sit down and talk to a few of them. Obviously with IMSA, especially the GTP cars, they're very technical. If it was 20, 30 cars that were all the same, that's great. But I think what makes IMSA so special as a series is that you have multiple categories. And there's such different speeds around this track. So even if a GTP car doesn't, car doesn't overtake another GTP car in an hour, they're still overtaking 300 cars in that hour. Yeah. So it's, it's really cool because of that. And then you throw in the, how competitive each one of those categories is and how cool the cars look, how different the cars look. GTP, unreal these things. This is what you draw as a kid and you have on your, your bedroom wall. When you look at it from front to back, it's more old school racing. You have the pit stops, which are insane, jumping over the wall, um, the whole thing. It's a little bit less informal. And if you imagine as a kid, what is real racing? This is what we're racing is. I mean, the fans are, are really a big part of it. You know, we can get people really close to stuff to see a lot of technology in the cars, you know, like we have track control and we have ABS functioning and using a ton of data every session. I mean, I just got my data from my last session set to be via my iPhone. Right? Okay. I think it, as a package, it's a very, very special series, as is World Endurance Championship as well. You had quite a bit of experience with the F1 hybrid cars from their inception all the way up through 2016. What, what was it like coming back to GTP now? Because you've got all these systems on these cars, maybe in a slightly different way. In Formula One, we're very limited in what we could actually do from the cockpit. We obviously didn't have touch control. Many other controls weren't left to us either. Whereas here, there's a hundred switches for different things that do kind of the same thing. What's the workload like in the car? Like, are you are you always on the panel on the steering wheel? Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of are, but there's a lot to get your head around. There needs to be a good understanding from driver to engineers uh, and simplifying. You have all these systems, but you simplify down to what's the most important for you in that car at that moment in time, and, and then it's great. So one of the things with any playground is you need somebody to tell you what the rules are, and that is IMSA's job. But with these new complex cars, there's so much data and information, you've got Bosch at the center of that, pulling that all together. Like when you're talking about a, a series like this where you, you want the performance, if you had you know, five or 10 different types of loggers with everybody using their own types of sensors for these critical things, it's, it's almost impossible to police that. So what are Bosch looking after? Because you've got IMSA who are looking after let's say the performance level of the cars, and then you guys are also stakeholders in other aspects of the sport. You've got lots of hardware, on, especially on the GTP machines as well, yeah. not just data systems. Right, right. So, uh, you know, in terms of uh, racing electronics, what Bosch has you know, been heavily involved in from, from day one is some of the most fundamental parts of the IC engine, like the spark plug yeah. and like your fuel uh, injection system. Um, but now when we get you know more into the computerized era, we have um, electronic control units, so those 
control the engine or a vehicle control unit and that helps control like the hybrid system. And then we have dash displays that obviously gives the, the driver information. Uh, we have telematic systems so that gets the data out of the race car up into the cloud and yeah. then we can disperse the data from there. Having that all under one roof is important because the technology is changing so rapidly and for someone to go out and say, okay, I need to find this gadget, I need to find that gadget, and then I need to figure out how to get them all to talk together, is very, very time consuming. Yeah. If you have 10 different people trying to do that exact same thing, it's like, don't worry. That's what you guys can offer, is Exactly, it? and so that's the role. The system integrator, um, taking the, uh, basically bringing the technology that's out there in, in these different industries um, and looking at them and saying, okay, that's great, but that, kind of will only work in that domain. Let me figure out how to innovate on top of that and yes. push the, the boundary even a little bit further and bring that technology to life on the racetrack. Bosch, what do you guys have on the cars? This, this is top level. It's the GTP cars and the GTD cars as well this year. It's, it's everything from your side. Right, so it starts from really small things like sensors, so pressure, temperature sensors the vehicle motion position sensors was really, really cool technology. Um, and then from there, we start to go into some of the control units and stuff that we do. So we have the screeneering data logger uh, system, um, and then we have uh, the telematic systems with their, um, based on our LTE technology, the LTE 65. And then from there, we go onto the hybrid side. We have the spec components being the, the motor, um, the motor controller, uh, the hybrid control unit, the electronic braking system. Um, also, low voltage wiring harnesses that connect all that stuff, the high voltage harnesses that connect all the high voltage side. Um, and those are just the things that we're doing bespoke for the series themselves. But you know, another major part of, of Bosch is, is our relationships that we have with the OEMs. And so if you take um, an, a peek in some of these GT3 cars, it's literally our catalog in there. So. Uh, driver display, our um, world-renowned uh, collisions and avoidance system with the radar technology in the back, so cool. which is really, really so cool. cool. Our analog braking systems, our engine control units, um, our fuel systems, um, and yeah, I'm sure there's a few things that I'm yeah. missing, but I think you get the idea. Yeah, it's everything. So. Let's rewind to a year and a half ago when you guys are in the development stage of this new class from a development point of view. So a year and a half ago, we're showing up at our first shakedown, hoping the car leaves the pits, and then hoping it does a lap, and then hoping it does five laps, and we didn't even make it to a full stint. Then we go to 2023, we show up here, we're hoping to make it 24 hours. This year, but we feel we've closed the gap from what the car potential is quite a bit. And then we got the track record. So obviously we're making some progress as a class too, because the whole field's under the track record. It's not like Cadillac's way out in front. Everybody is moving yeah. along together. Yeah, but I mean, let's talk about that. What were some of the challenges like in that process, like from a systems integration point of view? Um, to, to get the systems working in a car this complicated, generally in the past, and uh, say a GT3 car, which we're still racing and are still coming, the systems and all the electronics in the car come from the manufacturer. It's so much different in a GTP car. We have the scrutineering system, which is live running calculations more so than they ever have in the past. You have a hybrid system, which is spec and not under control from the, the constructor of the OEM. Within that, there's also multiple suppliers that have software running. The chassis electronics are common to our spine, so they're all within one, but then the power control electronics are a separate system that the OEM provides. So we basically have five different systems that all have to work together in sequence to be able to, to drive. One of the super cool things about this is, yes, you have added a lot of levels of complexity and now, but not you don't just have traction control, you've got yeah. brake mapping, you've got the interaction of the hybrid and the combustion engine and all those strategies working together. Now that you have all these sensors on the car and a lot of the calculations and, and measurements are quite standardized, I guess the next part is how IMSA play into that because they can see all of that. They see everything that you can see, more or less. Having IMSA involved in the data and knowing exactly what everybody's going on, you can kind of focus on your task at hand and be like, you know, we perceive the car should be able to do this. You know, we know IMSA is kind of monitoring. Let me just make the best model. And it often kind of will correct things. Maybe I'm out of the box. You know, if I'm not as quick as car X, Y, and Z, you know, maybe I need to be a little more creative on my setup for these conditions or look at something different. Instead of being looking at other people, you're more introspective now because you do also have 
all that high quality information and data that you're measuring on the car. We look at things a different way because we deal with the driver. You know, HRC look at Aeromap a different way because they're dealing with sim models and so forth. And we suddenly said, okay, in this world we work one way, but when we get on track, we kind of pivot. So we almost do driver speak, if you will. We help the driver kind of understand, you know, really getting them on board with how to work, interact with the control systems and so forth. So kind of some of that data analysis is, is kind of built around how can we help the driver understand it. You touched on it earlier. You've just got a telemetry overlay uh, yeah. from, from some of your from your run and free practice this morning. Yeah. Are you a data guy? Well, I am. I'm, I'm a seat of pants guy first, okay. right? But like I was saying earlier, you know, my job is to paint a picture for my engineer, who's yeah. the data guy, really. Yeah. And then he can say, oh, yeah, it makes sense. And then yeah. look at what can we do from a damper or spring or bar yeah. uh, to change how the car works and to make it, obviously, the whole point is to make it better yeah. for me or yeah. for the driver. And, and that just goes to show there's a lot of ways to say what you need to say. Sure. Right. And if I can paint that picture and then also go to the data and say, this is what I'm talking about, we're going to make much more rapid steps forward. And that's just going to turn into results. So what do I think about IMSA? Well, one of the things that obviously you can see here is the paddock is wide open. This is, every fan has access to here at Daytona. One of the other great things about it is the number of cars and classes and drivers like we discussed, but ultimately the thing that gets me really excited about IMSA and sports car racing is the level of competition. I mean, you go through these 24 hour races and you have all these cars finishing on the lead lap. I mean, for me, in terms of racing and enjoyment and action, it's got absolutely everything. In episode three, we're going to talk about how IMSA and the teams are using all this information to push the performance envelope of these cars while maintaining an exciting and competitive racing championship.